All right. Go first. I sense decent. Got two drop into stuff into Exalted Pathfinder. We're gonna. F so one of the things you want to do with this deck, especially when you have um, Exalted Pathfinder in the opener, guaranteed. You want to make sure you hit your first four resource drops. So. Never played or watched this game, so we're here for the fireworks. Well, hopefully there'll just be some good, some good clean, some good clean hex is a touch loud. Thank you. We know how that is. So we're going to play our ice out here and fate weave a resource to the top of our deck. So we're going to guarantee get to play four resources in four turns. So this deck that I'm playing today is built around the new momentum mechanic um, in uh, Dead of Winter. It's a very powerful mechanic, so momentum is when you play a resource, this gets plus power and toughness equal to its momentum, and then um, its momentum goes up by one. So basically, the more resources you play, the bigger and bigger and bigger your troops get. What's going on, folks? Thanks for coming in. Someone asked how how we recovered and Hex is now working in on my computer. Um, big shout out to Chris Woods, if you watch the stream archive. Uh, I am playing on a... Uh, beta build that he exported for me that's able to connect to the regular server so like this build more than the ramp like build i haven't played the more ramp based build with the bigger top end yet it's on my to-do list no this hex is much closer to magic than pokemon although this deck does this deck does kind of explode sometimes not not on turn one and turn two but you know it builds it builds momentum Wait, okay, so, uh, perhaps my opponent didn't realize that, uh, MC was unique. They played one unique troop and then played another unique troop, so it went away. Whoops, misclicked, yep. Alright, so that's another decree. So this card, when it, uh, readies, so when it, uh, an exhaust, it'll uh, turn into, it'll it'll draw something out of their deck. Interesting they're playing a tri-shard deck. At some point, we'll definitely play control. So you'll note there, I made sure to play out my second Jubilant Jouster there before I played my resource for the turn, so that way their momentum can build up. I'm gonna go to attack like this, like I have a combat trick, they're probably gonna block with their 3 No blocks, good deal. Yeah, it's a, attacks like this are really easy to make. It's a free attack into it's a free attack into a free decision for my opponent. So this attack, I'm not going to use this troop on the backswing, and like I might have a trick to blow them out, so they might not block. Yeah, Hex just had their second uh, standard rotation, so format is very fresh. The question is, do I want to call here? Um, no, I, I have these two Decree of Banishings in my hand that can devoid a troop, so my Jubilant Jousters are going to kick into three threes here. And then I'm just going to Decree of Banishing this to get rid of it before they have, before they get to ready with it. Rift Warp Badger, yep. It's always a great time to get into Hex, but yeah, if you're someone that uh, wants your cards to be legal for the longest possible amount of time, right after a rotation is definitely, definitely one of the best times to get in. Ooh, that's, that's really good. This card is very strong against us. The start of each champion's turn, they sacrifice a non-socketed card. So both the cards I have in play right now are non-socketed. Socketed cards um, are cards like this that have these gems on the side that have customizations on them. So I'm going to have to sacrifice my Jubilant Jouster here. X is completely free to play if you want it to be. Um, you can create an account for free and then play with the free cards that you just get on the account. No, it's not like Magic Online. Magic Online has a ten dollar, a ten dollar fee to create an account. So it's it's nothing like Magic Online. The, the gameplay is similar to Magic, but the way um, X has a buy sell trade secondary market like Magic Online does. But as far as like account creation and like acquiring cards go, you can do it completely for free. So uh, I don't think I want to trade my Jubilant Jouster for the Rift Warp Badger here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pass. They played both these decrees and got rid of their two troops. I really don't want to hit another resource next turn. So my Exalted Pathfinder, in addition to having uh, momentum, whenever I play a resource, it draws a card. So if we hit a resource next turn, not only will it trigger momentum for both of my guys, but this Exalted Pathfinder will start drawing cards for us. What does this do? When this deals combat damage to an opposing champion, uh, a random troop in your hand gets all the socketed powers, or this has deals double damage. Okay. 
interesting. Yeah, correct. There's no, there's no crafting system. There's no opening. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking this trade here. So if I hit a resources, so I'll have momentum. This is momentum three, so it'll be a four four next turn. I don't really like the art in the AA adjuster. This is our draw here has been a little bit awkward. We didn't get this has not been a good showing for the deck to start. Um, we didn't hit either of we didn't draw either of the uh, leprechauns that generate lucky coins for us that kind of like keep us going we haven't hit any of our copies of pomegranate so we're kind of floundering here drawing too many non-resources which hex pvp tools.com logs every single match of hex that's ever been played both competitively and non-competitively or uh in, on the ladder and in um tournaments sorry the challenge matches between friends, casual matches aren't logged on there, but anything anything that's played for any amount of prizes is logged. This guy deals double damage, so I think I'm just gonna have to chump block here. I don't think I can take nine. We really need to hit a resource here. Or pomegranate would be insane. That is not a resource, but the Bright Hammer adept here does have the mechanic, the fate weave mechanic on him, so I'm gonna go ahead and play him out. He's going to Fate Weave, so now we're going to be guaranteed to draw a resource next turn, which is nice. Get this Jubilant Jouster out, and then I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn here. I was bringing Hex. Hex usually has reasonably deep formats as far as, like, being able to play decks that are outside of the, the typical meta. Alright, so they're attacking with these two again, probably. And I think I have to chump block this Boyo again. Throw this one under a bus, take another three. Hopefully, my Exalted Pathfinder with this resource on top of my deck here is going to get to snowball a little bit for us now. So, I'm going to play this Righteous Whack Shot out here because she has momentum as well. So, all of my troops are going to get plus one, plus one here. Draw a card. Drew a Decree of Banishing. Does that really help me? No, they haven't really played anything that I'm particularly interested in decreeing. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. This Exalted Pathfinder is a 4-4. Gets to block this at bay. My Jubilant Jouster can trade with their Quenchinator. I'd rather have the Wax Shot jump block. I'd rather have uh, the Bright Hammer Adept jump block than the Righteous Wax Shot, I think. I don't think I really care about this guy just yet. Hey, there's there's the Gold Father. So the Gold Father is one of our ways we generate a lot of extra things. This says uh, whenever your opponent plays a non-resource card, generate a lucky coin. A lucky coin is a resource that fate weaves for us. I actually think this deck that I'm playing is very good. Wherever, wherever you, this is a very, very bad first game showing for it, but uh, opponent hasn't killed us just yet. I don't actually think I want to play this decree of banishing it again. I'm like asking myself, like, how do I lose from this current position that I'm in? And um, the answer to that question is like my opponent getting something like a dark heart that I can't answer. So I'm just going to kind of hold this decree of banishing for like some kind of powerful threat that my opponent can play that I can't necessarily answer. Because like now my opponent can't play any non-resource cards without giving me resources and my resources alongside my exalted pathfinder here. If they have an animus here. So animus is very powerful. That's the card that I would like to get rid of decree of banishing. It says whenever they play a socketed card, all their other socketed things get bigger. They're probably going to ship with this. I think I'm going to be obligated to throw away my Righteous Wax Shot at this point. I'm going to go ahead and block here. Well, everyone's kind of figuring, feeling their way around right now. Hex just had, just had their first, or their second rotation. So my champion power here, in addition to letting me play an extra resource this turn, also um, gives a, a troop I target momentum. So my Shamrock, the Gold Father, is going to start building momentum here. So I'm going to go ahead and play this Shard of Life out to uh, gain a resource and draw a card from my Exalted Pathfinder and trigger momentum on all my guys. I'm going to go ahead and play my Leprechaun Artist out here. I'm going to play my Lucky Coins out, which triggers momentum again on all of my cards. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and put a resource on top of my deck here. I think... I would like to just decree a banishing this Animus of Nulzan. I think I think that's what I want to do with my life. Because if they draw another socketed card, the Animus is going to give all of their socketed cards, make them bigger. What's the best way to actually get in then? So you can either 
um, create an account for free and then grind uh, the PVE and the lower ranks of the ladder. Um, or you can, if you're someone who enjoys limited, you can go infinite and limited playing that way. You can take your packs and turn them into uh, more stuff. Do I want to attack with my 6-6? Six, six? I think I want to attack with my 6-6. Six, six. Leave my 8-8, eight, eight, my 7-7 seven, seven back on defense here. Um, when you have Exalted Pathfinder in play, you basically just always want to hit your resource drops. Just always, always hit your resource drops. So opponents found a resource for their 7th charge, but they, uh, ooh, Grimskull is pretty good. This is going to let them exhaust one of my things. Hopefully they don't have, hopefully they don't have a, uh, a second socketed card. I'm going to get punished for having attacked with the 6-6. Six, six. They have another, they have, am I dead? Wow. So they were holding a Grim Skull, and they drew a second Grim Skull. I'm going to take 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so because I attacked with the 6-6, six, six, I just died here. That's a tilt. Took us a little took us a little bit too long to get moving that game. It did. We we looked a little bit... Um, took us a little bit too long to get it. Uh, find a... One of our... It's my cost to find a pomegranate or a shamrock or a leprechaun artist that game and we just weren't able to recover from it my opponent left the game they won game one and they left the game all right i'll take it uh they didn't uh they didn't have a second ruby rogue so um Chris Woods, who is one of the developers at Hex, I believe he's the lead developer at Hex. He uh, he had a little bit of time uh, today and yesterday, and he went the extra mile. And I'm currently playing Hex on an unofficial, unsupported Linux version of Hex. Uh, this hand's very good. <sighs> we are on the draw against Grandfather Elk, which is a little bit, a little bit scary. Um, ideally, we'd have a diamond on one, but we get a draw step. If we get diamond on one, this hand's going to be very good. Opponent just said sorry. They had to run. He's opponent. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to want to fate weave yet with this wild ice that we just drew. So I'm going to go ahead and lead on just the shard of life here. It's, it's running well, Fred. I'm, I'm really interested to load this up on like my netbook computer. That's got like, cause my, my, this, my streaming computer has like a, a 1060 in it and it's got 32 gigs of RAM and like a, a high end i7 processor for running virtual machines. So like the computer I'm, I'm streaming on right now has some get up and go, you could say. So I'm interested to see if there'll be any performance difference on my, my lower end computers that were running at via wine. Hey, evening, Nero. Penta Chills, raiding with a party of two. Welcome to folks coming over from Penta Channel, hanging out playing some Hex here this evening for the first time in a while. Back at it. Um, yep, so let's uh, just start building momentum on my Leprechaun Artist here. Let's play the Artist. Let's play this Diamond Shard so we pick that up and then play the Righteous Wax Shot out here. We attack with both of these next turn, ideally. Hopefully we don't just get insta-gibbed here. Opponent could have the, the old Communion and Wax, Surging Wildfire, Champ Power dead dead us here coiling nebulous when this deals damage to combat damage to opposing champion create a rare portal and put it in your hand okay sure probably gonna see a champ power here really no champ power okay i think i'm just taking this hit I'm not going to be up super late because Declan, Declan O'Clock does happen earlier and earlier these days, but uh, we're going to play, we're going to play for an hour or two. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and play this Bright Hammer Adept out. So now 
I can go ahead and put non-resource on top of my deck at this point. I think I'm gonna put a non-resource on top of my deck. Huh. I'll put a non-resource on top for now. Uh, I think I'm gonna hit my champ power here and just like build a really solid wall. So I can give something else another momentum one and then play this other resource from my hand, which I think is what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this. And then, oh, you know what? I should have stacked, I should have stacked these fate weaves the other way because I kind of want to resource two cards down, but now I've stacked, oh, I guess I'm going to have, I'm going to have a resource from Leprechaun Artist, right? So I can just like stack all the non-resources I want. Yeah, I'm done. Never mind. Ignore me. Yeah. Ignore me. All right. So we've got 13, 15 defense worth of blockers here. This Dorko makes a lucky coin whenever he attacks, and the lucky coin is a resource that Fate Weaves. Notably, it doesn't make a threshold, so no colors from it. It doesn't give us a charge towards our champion power, but what it does do is trigger momentum. Granted, that's fantastic, Penta. That's awesome. This, I'm excited. This seems to be working well. I, th I think I'm throwing the Jubilant Jouster under this bus. The artist is very good, I concur. Uh, Soul of Battle, Soul of Battle rotated, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check that Soul of Battle rotated before And armies of myth. Okay, soul of battle is not legal. I'm gonna block like this. I think they could have. If you're not at risk of dying and kill them, on... that's true. I could just try and kill them on the backswing. Um, the problem is, I they're probably gonna have a blocker or something. So I think I'd like to take their guy off the table. I think it's a little bit too aggressive to just take eight there. Plus, like. This is uh, momentum five, so this is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. These three are actually lethal, all three of these. This is six, this is three, this is three. Gain charges when this attacks, create a rare portal, put it in your hand, okay. Palm of granite, well that, that is going to be super de duper lethal. Let's play palm of granite. And my opponent's gonna need the jump block here. Let's do that. And let's do this. Oh look, that's just lethal. Man, Pomegranate's a messed up card. And this, this was a good example of what my momentum troops do. This is how we do. All right, all right, what are we doing here? What are we doing? This gets rid of blood and wild troops. Uh, yeah, that's probably fine. I like Winter's Grab, so with this deck um on the draw in the aggressive matchups i like to cut the jubilant jousters and bring in more removal because when we're on when we're on the back foot you want to um be interacting with their troops more like playing out a one one on two it's much worse than just like playing spot removal and killing their killing their thing does blinding ire do enough <sighs> i'm not gonna board in two of these i feel like blinding ire is the type of card that i might get stranded with one in my hand Yeah, sure. There's always going to be something something that's the best, right? I'm I am much happier if Howling Brave and Chlorophyllia are the best deck than rather than whatever it's called. We're we're gonna work on Exalted Commander decks, but let's be honest. Ne Neo's card here is is the best Exalted card they've printed to date, and it's not it's not particularly close. I need to turn the hints off. This thing battles Ruby Ruby Poopers, right? All right, I'm gonna cut this Pippet Pal and bring in one of these. It might be a touch slow, but I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna split the difference there and bring in one of each, and I, one Iron Mod, one Blinding Iron, just see how it feels. Just see how it feels. Settings, enable hints. Oh no, oh no. Maximize, all right, look at that, look at that. So this hand is, 
very good. Um, all of your hands where you can play Righteous Wax, wax Shot on one and curve it into a true drop are just so insane. They have a Witch of the Wishing Well. Okay, sure. Perfect. Want to hit my first three resource drops every time. Yeah, I think so. Neo's card is very good. No blocks. We get to connect with this wax shot next turn too. We get to like give this momentum two right away. Hmm, that's annoying. What am I what am I doing here? This gives your things gladiator one. I think I'd rather just play this and pass. Just like get get this coin generation going guaranteed here. I only saw some like fringe amounts of play rogue. That's a 4-2 Righteous Outlaw. That's really good. All right, well. Uh, I guess I'll bounce here, and then next time we need to decree of banishing this. Like, not, not the end of the world. This thing's gonna start building some momentum. This is actually, actually a pretty reasonable draw for us, because it lets us curve out nicely here. I'll do that. Play this Decree of Banishing, gobble up this guy. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get in here. Make a coin, give this more momentum so we can snowball this a little bit harder here. Because next turn, we're gonna get to go Sky Captain, Shard, Champ Power, Lucky Coin. Done, trigger our momentum twice, which will give us a good solid defense. We could die this turn to Communion Wax, like 10, 10 out of 10 could die to Communion. Are we just dead to that actually? Yeah, we're gonna be dead to... They're putting us to one? No, because this does, yeah, because this does 12, right? This does 12. <laughs> technically, technically not dead. Um, technically going to one. <laughs> Palm of Granite, one-time dealer. Is Palm of Granite lethal? Probably not. I think I need two guys for Palm of Granite to be lethal. <laughs> it's unfortunate, we got set up, we're gonna get set up pretty well. A little touch, touch slow on the draw. I think having seen how that game just played out and those other smaller troops, I'm going to cut this Iron Maw and bring this Blinding Iron back in. I don't think I want these Winter Grasp. I think I'd rather have my Jousters on the play. Leave in those. Yep. So again, on the draw, I like to be a little bit more defensive. Again, like, which Winter's Grasp would have been good there, right? Like, clearing out their, clearing out the early drops. But on the play, we can just, like, play our, our two drops out and then, like, pressure into them. Get back to my Forest Battle Board here, which is beautiful. My big, beautiful Forest Battle Board. Um, it's a little slow. It's got two, two path. This, this, this might be... Maybe I'm supposed to board some of these out. Maybe I'm supposed to go down one Pathfinder and bring in the last Jouster. Potentially draw into Ire there. Uh, yeah, maybe. I actually didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Rogue. Can't think of what to say at the moment, Fizzy Drag Pun. With the 313 sub, thank you and welcome back. I appreciate it. Worth noting that the Kriya Banishing looking worse than, uh, that's... Exactly what this hand needed. Uh, Decree of Banishing looking worse than Winter's Grasp would be here. So I'm like not going to be able to use my resources this turn. Yeah, this is probably a bad keep. Should should learn to mulligan more. Yep, so if this was Winter's Grasp, I'd be able to just take this out here. Awkward. Goldfather? Goldfather? Jubilant Jouster, right on time. Can't uh, play that one out. <laughs> no, they are they are not unique. That's correct. I don't think we'd play four if they were unique. 
not sure actually. Boltwing Phoenix, that's pretty good. Huh, maybe I did want non slow shard, please. Well, that's that's eventually a shard. That's like the slowest of shards, right? Community and wax kill me. <laughs> I said I kept a bad hand. All right, let's try again. Try again. Try one more. Try another one. <laughs> That's literally the first ladder match I've lost with this deck, so it's it's fitting that it's on stream. I think I played like nine or ten ladder matches, and that's the first one I've lost. <laughs> Good stuff. And it's great, we're on the play. Let's get violent. I'll reach this wax shot in here. This card's really good. Yeah, the community wax is socketed with double damage. Yeah, the new deck selection screen looks very nice. Our opponent's champion here, good question. Three charges, target troop gets plus one power for each troop in the opposing crypts until end of turn. This hand is gonna get very out of control. That was a phenomenal draw. This is just gonna be a good example of aggro deck gonna curve out on the play here. So, Righteous Wax Shot's gonna crack my opponent here. It's gonna add momentum one to my Jubilant Jouster. Next turn, we're going to play this Diamond Shard, attack my opponent for five, and then put Shamrock Goldfather Gold Father into play. Momentum is a new mechanic with uh, the set eight release. Shamrock is great. Look, if you're going to... Actually, this is the first time we're playing Shamrock on three, right? So, like, if you tell me I'm really good at drawing Shamrock, I'm like, we're like, like average at drawing Shamrock. I'll play this out. I'm going to play this Shamrock out uh, pre-combat because if my opponent doesn't trade with this Righteous Wax Shot, actually, am I offering this trade? I'm not, this is gonna be a 3-4 next turn. Yeah, I'm a Dirty Liar, I'm just gonna attack with this. I'm okay with this trade, I think. But like next turn, this is just like on track to outpace my opponent's troops, so. Oh no, our hero has fallen. Hey, Hacky Channel, Dasa Shamrock. Hi, Jeff. Welcome, welcome back. 19 months. Thank you for the continued support. They were both on pace, but like that troop's annoying. It's like I don't, I don't like hate killing their troop. Hmm. Exalted Pathfinder. Um. So do I want to go Jouster, Bright Hammer Adept, or Skylands Captain? I feel like I just want to get more momentum building, right? So I'm gonna play this and guarantee a resource on top of my deck. Then I'm gonna play this and guarantee another resource on top of my deck. And then next turn, we will play my Exalted Pathfinder, play a resource, draw a card, champ power, play the next resource, draw another card. Probably kill my opponent. like buries 10 cards off my deck right yeah that's fine i think the opponent's dead next turn are they dead so this is this is gonna get plus nine this is gonna get plus seven this is gonna get plus three so yeah i believe nine seven and three plus two more is dead wait did i put non-resources on top of my deck oh we milled the fate weaves 
I buried my god. I'm so dumb Man Hogland just has no idea what he's doing. Look, it's it's late folks. It's late. I Got I got no idea what's going on I'm a poor I'm a poor fate weaves we were so we were I was so hyped to kill my opponent that turn and now we just have no momentum left Womp 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 All right, well a horrible mistake was made should have given my opponent a 5-5 five five, because all of my troops were going to be much larger than that and I would have drawn more cards uh, Yeah, I'm gonna bury some more cards here at this point I think I want that idiot in play Buried the last one. I feel like they sequenced that in the wrong order. Oh, this only this only gets bigger for troops that it actually buries. Okay, come on. Come on, give me a shard. Papa needs a shard. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. All right, trigger momentum once. Let's draw another resource. Built. All right. Uh, Rawr. Look, Waffle. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Declan O'Clock was 18 hours ago. God, it was 18 hours ago, wasn't it? Holy God. Declan O'Clock is very early in the morning. Declan O'Clock is very early in the morning. Um, Hex.tcgbrowser.com is kind of the gatherer for Hex. You can see all, all the Hex cards on there. And the current standard format is sets 5, 6, 7, and 8. this do very three draw card okay our deck is getting dangerously thin here ding 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 that's basically what happens in the morning all right opponent is conceding we could have missed on a resource there um opponent has got a bunch of blood troops so i guess i'll bring in these blinding irs um is that what i'm doing i'm gonna trim Let's pip it, pal. I'm going to trim this Exalted Pathfinder. I feel like I just want to be aggressive and kill them, right? Like, let's trim some of my top end, bring in some efficient removal, and just, like, keep all 12 of my two drops. There's a filter for standard? Look at that. I never noticed that. Should have paid attention to that more. If we see our opponent, um, opponent seems like they're a more aggressive mill deck. If we see our opponent start playing cards like Massacre in the second game, our board plan will pivot a little bit into like the Brosy Bucks and the Merry Caravans. These are cards that let us grind a little bit better against control decks, but. What a tilt. Get excited about new filter. New filter doesn't work. Well, I appreciate subscriptions. We do. The Discord is is all about lots of lots of good discussion in there. Um, I should mulligan more, right? I'm just gonna replace this hand and m mulliganing mulliganing against. Look at how good this hand is. I need to mulligan more. Darth Malice with the brand new sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. I do appreciate it. This hand is phenomenal. It's got our wax shot into Leprechaun into Zigold Fazer. Just all, all of the lucky leprechauns. Champion of Solaris with the Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. I'm pretty sure that's a resub from some point, but uh, at any rate, welcome back either way. Welcome or welcome back. It's working fine. I don't know. For now, 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My information is all over. Hey, stats! With the 20 month 3 subscription. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thank you to all of the hexers that stayed sub through my short uh, my short downtime there. I was kind of just spent on I was I was thoroughly spent on playing the set before rotation, just like had played so much of it. And then um for those that are unaware, there were some issues running the latest Windows version of Hex through Wine, which is why I wasn't able to get on right after set eight released like I was hoping to. But uh God bless Chris Woods. He uh thoroughly went the extra mile and i am uh here and live now all right let's go ahead and play this diamond shard out and uh i guess i guess we're just attacking right we're gonna play the gold father here next turn do do you want to block with your one four opponent it's very possible I should have, like, done this and this this turn, but this is just putting a 4-4 out, too, so. I guess if I would have played these two, I could have, like, gone shard-shard with my champion power next turn and, like, had a ton of momentum. The flying captains are very good. They're great at breaking up board stalls. We're hoping that our opponent doesn't find any of our six pieces of removal here. These leprechauns are fantastic against Runebind. Make make all of the resources. Yep. I bend one of my pomegranates. And remember now, whenever my opponent plays a card, the gold father's gonna go ahead and generate us a resource here. Nameless Devourer. Am I in a position to beat a 5-5? I'm going to momentum this twice. I'm going to momentum this twice. Yeah, I guess they could keep that, right? Let's go ahead and roam freely. So, into Vampire Prince. Okay. So, we got a bunch of lucky coins here. I'm going to go ahead and see what we draw. Well of Life. Um, yep, I'm going to go ahead and put this out. I'm gonna put this out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my champion power here. Hit, play a shard, which lets me hit my champion power. Um, oh, you know what? I messed up my sequencing a little bit here. I'm actually gonna discard these three lucky coins to play the top card of my deck. So if I hit a momentum trooper, I've actually missequenced. This could also hit a resource though and just like make our momentum troops go completely insane. Okay, I guess I should have. So now I've missed a momentum trigger on the gold father, right? So like I could have. Yeah, just like I'm all all sorts of out of sequence here. <laughs> yeah, the sequencing in this deck is very, very nuanced, and it's one of the reasons I've been enjoying it a lot. At any rate, attack you for 25. <laughs> and like I, I probably this would have been a 7-7, seven, seven, so I would have been able to attack and trade this for two of these, which I probably would have been okay with. Yep, there's your trump blocks. This deck is very, very powerful. It's funny, so like, we were testing Friday night for the bash last weekend, and Burgle was like, we just need to build the pre-constructed decks, just like, this, the momentum deck's probably very reasonable, build the momentum deck and play it against me, and I was like, alright, sure. So I built the momentum deck and just kept crushing him, and I was just like, alright, I guess I'm playing the momentum deck tomorrow. And like, the crazy thing is, once you have that snowball turn like that, where we pumped our troops three times, now their momentum's just high. So like, a single resource makes us a 7-7, seven, seven, and a single resource makes us a 6-6. Six, six. Ooh, they found, they found a Decree of Banishing. Who are you getting rid of? We're getting rid of my little baby troop, okay. 
Are you gonna die to the rest of my board opponent? It feels like you're gonna die to the rest of my board. Yeah, Palm of Granite. Palm of Granite can give some really, really obnoxious. We're playing a librarian to make another chump blocker. Yep. Kind of. So like you see how all of these reset to zero zeros here? I have to play a resource in order to give them that bonus. But when I play the resource, the bonus gets bigger for every turn that I consistently play a resource for my guys. Just chump blocks across the board here. I wonder if they have a massacre or a sweeper of some sort in their deck that they're playing to here. Fairy three, draw a card, sure. Librarian, sure. Um, man, if we had a pomegranate, they are gonna die. Actually, if we had a regular resource, they're gonna die, right? Because if we had a regular resource, it gives us a charge to our ch towards our champion power, and then we can play a lucky coin to follow it up. So any resources lethal here? So unlucky. Actually, does that does that let us kill them? I don't I don't actually know. Let's let's get a count in here. This makes my guys. Uh, so they block eight and then take 12, 18. Yep, dead. Crunch. Yeah, learning learning to count with momentum and the multiple resource drops i think i think i'm getting a hang on doing the math quickly finally it's definitely it's definitely been a learned skill i've been slower slower than i've liked but i'm slowly slowly picking it up Uh, there were a few different Sockets decks that saw play at the end of the last format. I'm not sure. Let me let me link you. If you go to HexPVPTools.com and click History, the bashes are the $1,000 cash tournaments that happen every weekend. And this, this is the bash. Um, this is the bash from last weekend. Hex, uh, Klet, I haven't been able to play. Get out of here. I bar barely played. They're going to be sliding back into... Excuse me, sliding back into uh, playing a bunch. No, you don't have to have it on two waffle. It's qu crackling magma is quick, so you can play it during the player's ready step, right? All right, and again, um, we're just gonna go bright hammer adept, shamrock, exalted pathfinder on the play. <sighs> Run them on out of here. The champions kind of dictate the archetype. There, there's a few, there's a couple champions that are like, see play in a few different archetypes, but like, yeah, like my champion, like gives one of my troops momentum and lets me play an extra resources. So it's kind of like tailor-made for the deck that I'm playing. This. I'm gonna guarantee one more resource on top of my deck here just to hit the first five in five turns. Yep, 
Yeah, I guess we'll see how late we can we can set. I thought it was a no. I thought it was a no downtime patch. I thought they tweeted it was a no downtime patch. Is there, is there, is there downtime happening for people? Play my resource out here. Play my gold father. So. All right, so what do I want to do here? I could play this Exalted Pathfinder and then just guaranteed draw a card this turn. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and attack with these two. I'm gonna get a little bit greedy here. If they have Hero Fall, we could get punished for the sequencing I'm about to have, but I feel like they, I guess they don't have double blood. Exalted so Pathfinder, there are many- I wonder if he's a interrupt, could have like a deny or the counter target troop, interrupt target troop, the elemental counter. No Massacre, no Hero Fall still. Would love to bury the top five cards in my deck for you. What on earth is that, dude? You, when a troop you control dies, buries the top three cards. All right. We're going to run our opponent into the ground here. Moment. Me. Un, un moment. Let's go ahead. Enchant power the gold father here before we play a resource. Because he's going to gain momentum. Gonna play this lucky coin out. Grab a non-resource, which we draw immediately. Let's go ahead. Oh, right. We get to draw two cards. Play this out. Did we hit the we did not hit the decree of banishing are they dead anyways now they're going to one <laughs> oh they blocked it went to zero okay interesting interesting choice um Nope, you can play, you can play any, any combinations you want. Like uh, the champion I'm playing, for instance, is an only wild, is a wild champion, but I have diamond and wild cards in my deck. Oh, there are, there are shard requirements. Blitzkind with the 10 month three subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome back. I appreciate the continued support. Again, thank you to all the hex subs that kind of stuck it out during my break there. I had a self-imposed break and then I had a, a non self imposed break while I waited for Hex to get connected. Get set back up for me again. Shout out to Chris Woods. <laughs> I think we'll change decks after this. I have a bunch of this is just my favorite deck that I've played so far, but I also just haven't played a ton of decks. I've kind of like started playing this and then like fixated on it because this deck does a lot of the things I want to do. It's like aggressive and it draws cards and has a lot of fun sequencing decisions. <sighs> I'm gonna put a non-resource on top here since I have these pomegranates in my hand. Wasn't my break only two days? No, I didn't stream for like a week. I haven't streamed text in like a week. A week or more. It was it was a while. Okay, it was a while. Um I think I'm just gonna let this happen, right? I just like don't care about your 5-5. Five five. If they don't have removal our turn four is gonna be very Whoa, that's there's so many pomegranates. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it'd been like 10 days. I didn't count, 
but I thought it had been like 10 days. Because I was also I was also out of town, right? Cause like I was out of town for part of that. A second one. Uh, this one's gonna bury 10 cards off my deck. Oh, I guess burying things makes my pomegranate is potentially worse, right? Whoa, that's an aggressive attack. That's super aggressive. Play this. Do that. Play this. Uh, attack with my leprechaun artist. If they don't kill either of my guys here, they're gonna... I mean, they could potentially just die just this guy in the sky, right? I'm gonna play like four resources next turn. So if I play four resources, this gets plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So that's seven, nine, ten. So it'll be twelve. Hold to the nameless city, sure. <laughs> oh, and I get to give this momentum one, right? For my champion power. Okay, so they have removal up here potentially. I drew another wild chart. That's actually really bad for us, right? All right, so my champ power here, I guess. And then do this. And then do this. And then do this. All right. All right, good clean 30 ball coming across the table here. Now you're thinking with momentum. Ride, ride down, little doggy. Ride down. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. This is why I like the aggressive version of the deck. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that was good. All right. I like, like this deck a lot. I did not think this mechanic was gonna be super competitive and boy boy was i wrong boy was i thoroughly wrong <laughs> turn four attack for 30 is this good if so why please check yes or no it's this deck is really and again just like look at the curve right so if we sort by cost like the curve of this deck is so great just so powerful. There's a more ramp based build that Bob and Cheese has been playing and that, that build's probably fine too, but I just, I just enjoy actually killing people quickly. This deck has 12, 16 cards that cost two or less. All right, 